Hey what's up Linux fans, here's my video of the best distros for gaming in 2020. We're gonna go a little off the rails, uh, this might not be exactly what you're expecting, but I'm going to explain some pretty important details if you plan to be gaming on Linux in 2020. Uh, for best gaming performance, the only things that really do matter when choosing a distro is if it's going to have up-to-date drivers for your graphics card and what compositor the default DE is using. You can switch the desktop environment of any distro that you want to be using a different compositor, and I'll explain what a compositor does and why you're probably going to want to turn it off or disable it for full screen applications or add your games to a whitelist. Uh, things that don't really matter, what desktop environment you're using, if you're going to be using Mate or Gnome or LXQT, uh, it really all is going to be basically the exact same once you've shut off the compositor and your init system, systemd or runit or openrc, they're all going to perform almost the exact same. The things that really matter for gaming performance are if you have up-to-date drivers and if your compositor settings are correct. So let's talk about drivers. When choosing a distro, you might actually want to consider, is this more of a bleeding edge distro or is this something more stable? So for example, Ubuntu LST 18.04, uh, with the most up-to-date, you know, I just updated this before checking for the video, the latest drivers for Ubuntu 18.04 are 430.64 for Ubuntu, which came out in November of 2019. This is, it's February 18th here in Canada. Uh, yes, February 18th. And the drivers for Manjaro are 440.59, which came out February 3rd, so substantially newer drivers. Uh, the cycle for software releases on Ubuntu are, of course, more delayed for stability, but if you are going to be gaming on Linux, you probably want the most up-to-date drivers for your graphics card. This is going to be for both AMD and NVIDIA, so when doing your consideration, you might want to be on later drivers for increased performance. Now what is a compositor? A compositor is in charge of an off-screen buffer for each application window. So when you see things like the the water effect that happens on windows when you drag them around or a drop shadow, transparency for things like uh, like Conky where it has all of your system stats in a transparent thing so you can still see your background on it, that's all done through a compositor. Uh, but the thing with a compositor, since everything's being shoved through this buffer, is that it reduces performance. Uh, the compositor in GNOME is called Mutter, and the compositor that's used for most other things, if you're going to be using Openbox, LXQT, uh, XFCE, they almost always use Compton. Compton is quite extensible too, you can go into the configuration settings and switch them around. Uh, but by bypassing the compositor, you are essentially drawing frames directly from X11 clients, which are all of your applications are X11 clients, communicating to the X11 server running on your PC, which then drops that frame buffer onto your monitor. So if your application, your game, uh, Counter-Strike, Dota 2, whatever, League of Legends, you're running is going through a compositor, you're adding additional input delay, kind of like vSync, but a lot worse because it's also impacting the performance of your FPS because it, it needs to do all this extra calculation before dropping these frames out. So what, your compositor settings will have the largest impact on performance. So this means a poorly configured, fully custom kernel built for you by Gentoo from source might actually perform worse than Ubuntu with all of its bloat if you have the wrong compositor settings. So for example, baseline Manjaro, this is Manjaro LXQT, so it's already a lightweight desktop environment, but with Compton settings set to default, is actually being outperformed by Ubuntu 18.04. Uh, on later drivers, these are drivers from like two months ago. So the performance impact of having your compositor settings wrong uh, 
uh, is pretty pretty huge here. You'll see you see it's almost ex well, it is exactly with my numbers here. It's 10 FPS higher on both the 1% low and the average FPS uh, by just completely disabling the the compositor. In this case, uh, Compton got forked out into something called PCOM. So now with PCOM completely uninstalled, I get 10 higher FPS in my 1% lows and my averages. So it's a pretty impactful change, right? Like if you could, in Windows, change one setting and improve your performance by like 6%, that's, that's pretty, pretty serious. So this is to say you can choose any distribution you want, uh, largely. The most important thing is going to be if your compositor is realizing that you're playing a game and passing the frames through effectively. Uh, here's a screenshot from a YouTuber named Grey Wolf Tech. Uh, he has a great video about compositors that I just watched trying to find additional screenshots for this video. Uh, using Compton, having Compton disabled, that's a 33 FPS average higher on uh, on the PC that has Compton disabled and a full composition pipeline, which is a setting inside of the NVIDIA control panel turned off. So these frames are essentially being passed directly from the X11 client of the game straight to your screen, uh, meaning that there's less overhead for processing, making the FPS faster, and then the input lag is also going to be significantly lower as well. Uh, I'll have this video linked in the description below. You know, it's kind of an older game, and Dota 2 is also an older game, but uh, I'm pretty sure Tomb Raider 2013 is, like, up updated to use Vulcan already, too. So uh, this test is illustrates essentially the same thing. One, one problem that Grey Wolf Tech does point out is that having uh, V-Sync... V-Sync is one thing that if you have a... A game that has no setting for VSync and you're against screen tearing, uh, you could be using a compositor to fix things like that as long as it has VSync support. So let's actually do some recommendations here. My number one recommendation is going to be Manjaro. It's easy to install, there's great documentation for everybody, and there's very, very, very easy ways to install both 32 bit libraries and 64 bit libraries for your graphics drivers. If you're having problems installing Steam, it's very likely that you have missing 32-bit drivers uh, for something like OpenGL. And you can grab those very easily by just installing them, uh, following some guides on the Arch user repository. Everybody is writing documentation for Arch and all of that transfers over to Manjaro very easily. And like I said, you can easily uninstall the compositor completely it's just called PCOM. You just do a sudo pacman dash r, capital R, PCOM, and it'll completely remove it from your system. And that way you don't have to worry about it at all. You won't have transparency on your desktop, but honestly, that's uh, it, you could just shut it off when you're playing games or you could add it to, like I said, it's a pretty extensible thing. You can add exclusions to it or for full screen windows or for windows of a certain name or something that they'll bypass the compositor. I think it's just easier to completely shut it off. My next choice is going to be MX Linux. MX Linux being based on Debian, it has older drivers for, for Nvidia and AMD. So you're going to have slightly outdated graphics drivers, but out of the box it installs non-free, which is really nice. This is a system D free system. Uh, MX Linux uses SysV init, which is incredibly old, but it also has slightly lower system overhead than system D. So if you're somebody that thinks, oh, maybe I can get some extra performance by bypassing system D, MX Linux might be a place for you. Uh, strong software, you know, you can, I think MX Linux even comes with Steam pre-installed. So MX Linux for gamers is a, is a pretty great uh, place to be. And you can install dev files. So anything for Ubuntu will also install on MX Linux. Uh, Void, if you're an adventurous type and don't want to be running Arch, uh, if you if you want to run Arch, just install Manjaro. Come on. You don't have to be some superhero. Install it from the command, the command line. Or if you want to install it from the command line, just clone over a GitHub 
file that will automatically run all the uh, configuration for you, if you have one hard drive, obviously. Uh, Void Linux also bypasses systemd, and if you install the baseline version of Void, I don't think it even comes with a compositor if you're doing LXQT or LXDE or XFCE. I think that they all come without a compositor, so you'd have to install it yourself anyway. Uh, Void Linux, incredibly good performance. For most of the gaming that I do on Linux, it is on Void, so I would recommend this if you're a tinkerer. And finally, uh, I'll have this video of Grey Wolf Tech's compositor video linked in the description below. It was quite entertaining, actually. It was a it was a really good video, and the information in it, as like I know quite a bit about compositors anyway, uh, was all very good and accurate. So I recommend that you go check that out if you want some additional information on compositors and gaming performance. So that's it. Thanks for watching.